what I love about network marketing is you don't. It's not that you just found find yourself. You found you find your spirituality. You 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 become closer to things. You be, you you What's understand. Like I, I I've my, I've gone closer to, to to my faith through network marketing. Hmm. That makes sense. Um, I started belonging a little bit more through through network marketing to my faith. Welcome to the Excellence Project. My name is Eric Worry, and in today's episode, I have Rakan Khalifa. I'm excited to be able to talk to this 27-year-old network marketing entrepreneur, seven-figure earner, the lessons learned along the way over the course of the last six years of his journey. You're going to get a lot of great nuggets, great insights from it. I enjoyed the conversation. I know you will too. So with no further ado, let's jump into our conversation with Rakan Khalifa. Rakan Khalifa. Hey, hey. How are you? What's up, Eric? From Toronto. Toronto, Canada. So you've been involved in network marketing for how long? Um, six years. One month are we in? We are uh, six, month, six, six years this month. Six years? Yeah. All right. And I'm you're how old? I'm 27. 27. Yeah, so you started so, uh, when you were 21. 21 did yeah. you go to university? I did. I didn't finish, though. Okay. Yeah. All right. Didn't I, just, I just saw that the market. Me either. I'm like, yeah. Me either. Me either. Uh, so you saw network marketing partway through yeah, and got distracted. I just fell in love. Fell in love with it. I'm like, how can you not? Well, what I want to explore in this conversation is, as a young man, how you've become successful, oh. ups and downs, mm. lessons learned, mm. right? Peaks and valleys, right? <laughs> All of this, uh, <clears throat> what some people would go through. You, you, It's funny in our profession, after six years of working hard, you can consider yourself a little bit of a veteran. I, I agree. Like I, I was actually thinking about this a couple of days ago, and I'm like, I don't, I don't think, like I would think after ten years I would be a better, like a decade in the industry I would be yes, like I'm okay, I'm, this is what I want to accomplish after ten years, but I don't, I don't feel I, I, I don't know, maybe it's me, but I, I, I feel like I'm like still like starting up, yeah, because I feel like um, I've gone through phases in my business, and I found like it, it took me time to find who I am in the business, even after making six and seven figures, um. But I feel like this is the time where, okay, well, I know who I am and I know who I want to attract and I know where, what levels I want to reach at. Yeah. So I want to talk about all that. I want to talk about building in different countries around the world. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about what you've done to build your brand. Mm -hmm. I want to talk mm -hmm. about how you've developed other leaders, mm -hmm. your different strategies, lessons learned, all of that. So mm -hmm. it could be um, a four hour podcast for sure. Yeah, we can, we can, <laughs> we can go deep, which would be fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's start with the origin story. Where, where are you from? So I'm originally, I'm, I'm Palestinian, born and raised in Saudi, um, came to Canada 18 years old for schooling. And um, what was yeah. it like growing up in Saudi Arabia? Well, I mean, Saudi is not the Saudi right now that we see. That's for it sure. Uh, it changed over time. But it, it, it teaches. What's the biggest it, changes? Well, everything. <laughs> like what? Um, like, um, I w well, women driving. <clears throat> Oop. Women driving. Mm -hmm. Let's just that um there's many things like the country is more open there's more celebrities going there it's more open for tourism uh, they have to just change evolved over time they they saw that they want to be the next i would was, say dubai like a, saudi right now was dubai 20 years ago so it was a little uh, more restrictive when you were growing yeah up. absolutely absolutely so th there wasn't a lot of and y you know what eric i've heard of network marketing in saudi hmm. in a massive company uh, and and it, actually the company's still around I was 15 years old though, right? And they asked for this big price. The guy was sitting down with me. And I, I still remember like he kept, BBM days kept pinging me and like, I want to see you and come BBM. through. Yeah, BBM was Blackberry. Oh, Eric, come on, man. BBM? And BBM. It was, I watched it was, the Blackberry movie. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. You have to watch it on, on Amazon Prime. Okay. Um, they had 45% of the market global share. cell phone market share. And today they have zero. Wow. So this movie is basically the real life story of, uh, of what happened. Of how it happened. Wow. And how, how they rose, how they fell. Crazy. Lessons learned. But I mean, yeah, everybody at that point, everybody that everybody that I knew had a Blackberry. Yeah. Like even when I first came to it Canada. It was hot. Every, uh, very hot. Yeah. Everybody right. loved the little click. <laughs> click, click, click. They were in love with the clicking <laughs> keyboard. It's true. The satisfying true. click. Yeah. And they wouldn't change. The BlackBerry company wouldn't change, wouldn't adapt yeah. to the full screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. when they finally... Eventually they adapt, when but they, it's too when late. When they finally did, yeah. it was so glitchy and, and it had was, so it many wasn't problems. Worried. I've had, the, I've had the, 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 the updated version. I've had it. Not as good. No. No, they were way behind. No, no. Very. Apple, very, very, Apple very. ate their lunch. Oh, my God. 
So I'm anyway, a, yeah, Blackberry. going back. So Blackberry I, back, back I, when you're 15. I was, I, I was, you know, this guy sat down with me and he's like, listen, man, you gotta, you just gotta buy this product and it's this product that does this, this, and and and, and you, this is you, and then you you bring two of your friends. I'll talk to them for you, and then he kept drawing the pyramid, and I'm and I'm looking at this and I'm like, that well, this would be like a cool idea. But I guess I have two limiting beliefs, self-limiting beliefs. Number one, I can't sell this. Number two, I don't have the money to get this. Mm. And and I, I never got involved. Um, and then when I came to Canada, it wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I was more of a lover of the product. So I was called. And just so, you know, you understand, I wasn't like a, an entrepreneurship guy. Like I've never thought of myself as a guy. That's yeah, I, I, want to, I want to stay before we get to the Canada, yeah. you know, the evolution with yeah, schooling yeah, yeah, and everything yeah. else. Um, what was your family like? What was the mindset like? What was the culture like? My dad's an your entrepreneur. Family? Your dad's an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, heavy entrepreneur, and and like you, wealthy entrepreneur. And you grew up not wanting to be one. I I grew up not wanting to be one because it was so ups and like there were so many ups and downs. So you, and I saw all my friends had this like, uh, so, you know. So you wanted stability. Of, I want stability in my life. Versus volatility. Yeah, because we've had, you know, at, at one point in our houses, we have maids. At one point, my mom was cooking. So it was this, like, battle back and forth. And I didn't like it. I, I just didn't like the instability. Do you have brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have three younger. Three younger? Three younger. Uh, brothers, old. sisters? I have two sisters, one brother. Two sisters, one yeah. brother. I just know the one uh, sister. It, yeah, the one sister. She's borderline seven-figure earner. Yes. And then a younger brother. He is... Um, uh, almost a full-time income earner in network marketing. Mm -hmm. He's 18 years old, young young guy. Yeah. And uh, the youngest one is 15. Three more years yeah. <laughs> to really get her started. Right. <laughs> and uh, did your parents ever get involved? In network marketing? No. Yeah. No. no. So no. My mom is a house, what do they think? housewife. Well, I mean, I, I remember when, when I first... My mom was always on board with anything I've done. Mm. Um, my dad was like, this is stupid. Really? Oh, come on. Even as an entrepreneur. Oh my God. This is like, this is stupid. This wasn't, really. this wasn't real in his and, mind. And, and the, the problem is with that, that I've always had this conflicting message with, message with my dad because it was always like, I told him, you know, I had a job in Canada. I'm like, I want to do this. Right. And he was like, one day you're going to wake up. You're not going to like it. And I don't know. I guess I ignored him. I've never really taken like my dad's words to that extent. Um, because he's old, always wanted me to this, to be this engineer and I'm just not, he's an entrepreneur guy. and he wants you to be an engineer. No, well, he was an engineer, but he ah, owned the company. Ah, and, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, so he grad, so he wanted, you know, to, to, I guess, to pass on the company, yeah, yeah. but then he had this, his, his troubles and that eventually the company shut down. So when I came here, I'm like, well, to Canada, I'm like, I, I need to be able to just have stability. Okay. So you get to Canada, you're by yourself. Yes. 18 years old. 18 years old. Uh, barely. Where'd you go to university? Barely English. I went to York University. York? Toronto, Canada. Yeah. Uh, and and were you a good student growing up? No. So how'd you get into this university in Canada? I mean, I guess just, I don't know. Just they wrote a check. Back, and, back home, you can, you know, you, <laughs> you can, can just, they'll pass you just to pass you. Yeah. Just Especially to, international schools and private schools. Yeah. You, you pay a big did you, fee. Did you grow up in private schools? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, right. I, I was brought up as a rich kid. Yeah, yeah. School was um, $30,000, $40,000 a year. Wow. Uh, private. English teaching, yeah, um, drivers. So you know, yeah, like access. a good, a good life, yeah, yeah. Um, and even so, you're a little bit uh, risk averse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't, I don't know. The idea just never, never, never. I, I never liked it. Hmm. But I guess maybe, maybe it's this thing that you go back to your roots at one point. Or so or, I, or were you just being rebellious? Maybe, to, maybe. I just didn't like what, what happened there, so I wanted to just... Don't tell me what to yeah. do. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do, do this other Possibly. thing. Possibly, yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. But I feel like because this network marketing is such a new age of entrepreneurship, so when these other entrepreneurs see it, and they're like, well, this is like not real. This is not, you know, tangible. Sure. And and it, it, there was no point of me really battling my, my family for it, right? I've always done what I wanted anyway. Um, yeah. So I, I just like... Just kept at it every day. Um, one of the things that I've done, just so I can not be involved, not not that not saying that my parents are were negative or anything, but it's the little words you hear here and there. Yeah, Is this little things still happening. Is this still doing? Are you still doing this? Are you really on this call? So I just made it easy for myself, and I just went to a Starbucks every single day, That's every single day for two years. Now. What do you mean when you're in Canada? When 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 I started network marketing and I didn't like my parents. In Canada. Yeah, in but Canada. were your parents in no, Canada no, no, no. too? No, they came after. 
Okay. They came after. So, so, but still, you felt like you yeah. needed to have yeah, yeah, your yeah, own yeah. in my own, my own, my own space for sure. All right. So, you know, went to Canada, went to school, couldn't figure this out. Um, I've had a this. I, 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 he hates when I call him a mentor. But I feel like he was like a like a father figure to me in Canada, and I was hired at a job where um, they were paying me such like a small number, and I've never had a job mm -hmm. in Saudi. It's borderline illegal to have a job if you don't have a degree or you're not sponsored by. There's some technicality when working in the Middle East, um, and so I've never had a job in my life. I've never worked for my own money. I've always had money from my parents, and mm -hmm. it's crazy for for me to work and me to make money. So I've had multiple jobs, like typical Arab jobs, shisha bars, shawarma places, like something that I know I understand. Um, but then the last thing I, I ended up was a was a working at a gym, and this is when I I really fell in love with learning. It's because for you to be able to a timeline again, you're in Canada. Canada, you're going to school. I went to school for two years, and then you start working at a gym, or during okay. you're working at a gym. Uh, so uh, t uh, t uh, during the during the second year. During the second year. Second. And year. what were you studying? Uh, I, I want the civil engineering. Civil engineering. <laughs> civil engineering. Yeah. I, I've heard that <laughs> that most billionaires are engineers. Yeah, well, I, I didn't foundation. graduate, so I don't know. <laughs> so I was like, wow, that 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 disqualifies me. And I, you know what? I, I here's my philosophy because I've I've I, I've heard that before. But here's my philosophy about engineer. Engineers kind of they like they see a problem, they like solving it. Yeah. Right. And sometimes they create problems to solve it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this is why they have that that billionaire status. I don't think it's because they studied something extra. it's a problem solving aerodynamic skill. yeah exactly aerodynamic yeah. races and i don't think that is what got into a billionaire status but i feel like it's the ability like so i need in the market solve the problem yeah because i know like I, a lot of a lot of my families are engineers and they thrive off working x plus y i'm like <laughs> well, and you know it's funny you do the same yeah inside yeah. your network marketing but business. in a in a real business world what? right in in what, real what, what's in, different with I this agree. is a real business world. Yeah, you're, you're building infrastructure. You're solving yeah, 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 the problem yeah, 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 for yeah. people. You're doing all this. You're stuff. You're seeing so, what what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, what, where's the need? Mm -hmm. How do you fill the need? What's a more efficient way to do something? Yeah, yeah. How do you you know how do you uh, provide value to your uh, to the world to contribution? Mm -hmm. um, so you're working at a gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are you done with school then? Did you drop out? I'm like half in, half out. Half in, half out. Yeah. So emotionally, you're out. You're yeah, still going through the motions out, yeah. because that's still probably the only way you can stay in yeah. Canada, right? But, uh, exactly. You, yeah. you got to be able to keep, keep, to have, keep, keep your my, student yeah, status. Student, student visa. Yeah, student yeah. visa. So you're going to school, but you're not really caring yeah. much about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're working at a gym. Uh -huh. And then this network marketing idea pops up again. And then... Um, um, it, well, it, it, very long story, but long story short, I wanted to make extra cash mm -hmm. outside of the gym. Mm -hmm. um, I started working at a um, like at a shisha bar on the weekends, and at the shisha bar, I met my so and so called mentor upline. Okay. He was just spending a lot of cash, and I'm like, "What do you do for a living? Right? What is this? Where is this? It's like the Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah, you know, I, you show know, me your checks, show, bro. I, I, well, he didn't show me no checks, but he showed me a car. He was driving a brand new R8, and that was like my dream car at that point. I'm like, yeah. wow. And then he's like, listen, I'm drunk. Add me on Instagram. I'll talk, I'll text you later. And he, he really ignored me for the, like, I, I was like, can, can we please talk for three, four days? And then he invited me to an event. I showed up and I'm like, well, I guess this is common sense. This is nice. Makes and sense. So it's a combination of his credibility and, and a, and a system that made sense to you yeah. in your mind. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's just the product made sense. Product made sense, yeah, but, product, but but I didn't join as an network marketing. Okay, so you joined I, I, you joined as a product complete, user. Complete, yeah, complete. All right, this makes sense. Yeah, yeah, product yeah. user. I like right. this. I may use this. This yeah, can benefit this me sense. on the side. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah, I yeah. can also hang out with this guy a little. Exactly, bit. and this circle is looks like they're an elevated circle. Maybe I'll, I'll learn a thing yeah. or two. I can I can yeah. you know yeah, 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 yeah. work my way in True. to get around powerful people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah isn't that interesting? Yeah, uh, how. How strong that desire it's, is! It's 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 crazy. I really wanted to be from the circle. Yeah. And and I I'll never forget. I was a customer for six months. Didn't work with a single person. And um, you know, one of the times we we're launching, they were launching a new product. So you know, my upline calls me, and uh, she's like, "Hey, you should come. We're announcing this new product." I'm like, "Okay, I guess I'll, I'll come to the event." So I go to this event. It's packed. Everybody's excited. I'm like, "What's what's going on here?" And um, I guess, you know, they, they launched this new thing and I liked it. I'm like, oh, this is this is cool. After is uh, where like the leadership 
went to like a shisha bar. It's a shisha bar that I used to work at. Ah. I'm like, well, I used to work there. I can I can hook you guys up. Like anything to just let let me Get just in. Right, be right. close. And I went and that was my first time really like having a deep combo, I guess, with that guy. And he's like, man, I don't know what you're doing. You've been in six months and you haven't really built a business. I'm like, why would why why would anybody like I guess the, the, the products are amazing. Why would anybody like build a business around this? And I guess it was it wasn't long, but he just gave me some things. He just showed me what's possible. Hmm. And that's when I decided that day is I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna do this for I'm I'm gonna figure this part out. And I never I was never the the kind that I'm gonna try it out. I said I'm gonna do it. Yeah. So if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah. So you're gonna go. So did was there any hesitation because you're kind of risk averse? You're kind of entrepreneur averse. Yeah, yeah. You're looking for a steady path. This is not a steady path. Yeah. But I still had a job. Still had a job. So this was job. something like on the side. Your downside. Yeah. Was was uh, weekends. Late you're okay. Weekends. Yeah. yeah. I have nothing better to do. So so you decide to do this as a side hustle. And this was when, how long ago? Six months, like now? Uh, or six years, uh, I mean? Six years, yeah, six years ago. Six years. Yeah. So you decided to do it. And what, what did part-time- Actually, like five and a half years, because it's been six months, yeah. Got it. Yeah. So what did part-time look like to you? Mm, an hour or two hours a day. That's what you were doing? Yeah. yeah For yeah. how long? Um, how long were you at that pace, at that level? Well, I, my first, so my first six months, I didn't recruit anybody. Second six months, I recruited maybe four to five people total check of like under three hundred dollars. Four or five, not forty five. No, no, four to five. Yeah. Okay. Got four it. or five people. Let's just say five for the sake of numbers. Uh -huh. Um it, it, all equivalent maybe to under three hundred dollars in commission. And making uh, like three hundred dollars total, total for the six months? Yeah, total. It's a good thing it's part time. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean <laughs> that yeah. would have been bad. <laughs> yeah. And after that is when um, you know, some situations happened in in in, in my life that I, I had to turn the heat up. So explain. And I, it was my first. It was my first time seeing my mom work, ah. right? And I didn't know about it, right? So I got a call. It was a Starbucks. Typically, so as I said, every day Starbucks, eight a.m. to almost every single day, right? I go to work. Even after work, I come back, stay at the Starbucks. Um, at one point, I was doing like, you know, a morning shift and a late shift mm -hmm. uh, uh, for network marketing. Like in the morning, I'll just mess, send out some messages. At night, I'll, I'll go back to these messages. And I got a call from a person that lives in our neighborhood. And she's like, hey, I think I see your mom. And I'm like, "This is it's 8 a.m. My mom is it's a princess. She sleeps till 10, 11 o'clock. No way it's my mom. She's like, I, I and, I, you know, sometimes you have this feeling, Eric, that you want to be able to. It's just a weird feeling. It just, it allow it, it, it takes you to a place. So, you know, I turned up my car. It's like two minutes away. And I, and I have a video of this. I don't know why I what's was. Two, what's two minutes away? Sorry? The the where my mom was working. So where was she, where was she and so where she, were you? So I was at a Starbucks. Where she was working in, in beside my house. What where, where which house? Canada, Canada, Canada. Canada. And your yeah. mom was in Canada. Yeah, this is my mom came after two two years. Okay, so three, after, your parents sorry, are there three now. Years. Not all my parents, just my mom and my younger sister. Okay, right. Um, and then we was slowly transitioning to Canada at Got this it. point. Uh, guys, I made my, uh, some money from my job. I paid for a lawyer, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm grabbing them. This is the, from the health from my job. Club. From yeah, from the gym. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you're being the good son. I mean, she she literally being the just good came son, to Canada. Send, send some money. Yeah, come yeah, on yeah, over. yeah. She, so. they, they literally just landed in. Like it's it hasn't been like a couple months yet. Mm -hmm. And um, so you find you hear that your mom is working. Is working. Yeah. You get in and the she's, car. She's working like at a at a at a. You ever seen these these ladies that that work at a like a like a stop? Where they let the kids go, uh, yeah, like a sign. traffic stop, yeah, traffic, yeah, or yeah, like yeah, whatever yeah. crosswalk, yeah, exactly, monitor. So, type of thing. I because I couldn't believe it, I actually have a video of it, and I filmed it in a you know, and uh, I have actually played it at GoPro, um, and and as I, as I as I was approaching, and I see my mom, and uh, I feel like as the oldest child, I, I felt like um, maybe. I haven't done enough. Um, so I actually asked her, I'm like, why Why would you even get a job? Like, I, I feel like I can take care of the family. And um, in, in in short term, she said, I kind of saw your bank account that it's not looking good. <laughs> and this is when, like, I called my upline and I'm like, what do I need to do to make a lot of money? 
Well, first of all, before you go any farther, can you give us that, get us that video so we can put it in here? I, I absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, check out that video. Yeah. We'll come back. Short, short video. Yeah. As soon as it's done. Yeah. So, all right, we're back from that. So your mom says, look, kid, I, 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 just need I see how much you're making. Yeah. There's no way we're going to get where <laughs> we need mom. to go. <laughs> and, and you're like, as the oldest, this is not cool. This, this is, is, my mom is not meant for this. And my mom's never had a job in her entire life. Yeah. So yeah. she's like, swallow her pride, go do that yeah. thing. But it affected your pride. Yeah. And you're like, no, 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 no. not on my watch. No, no, not happening. Yeah, this is my, this yeah. is my uh, uh, situation. So sure. it's funny. Some, some people are motivated by inspiration. Some are by desperation. Yeah. So this is kind of a desperation, desperation moment. moment. Like sure. something, something has to change. Mm -hmm. Right. So you call your upline. What do you yeah. tell them? I, I need to make money fast, hmm. like quick. And she invites me to, and by default. So, so your, your, your upline's a, a woman. Uh, a woman. Yeah. But because my but your, that guy, but the mentor, guy that your mentor is the guy it was the guy. Yeah, okay. he, he was her upline. Pretty got much, it, got right? it, got she it. was right. like just Understand. helping out. And uh, she's like, well, we're going to Vegas in uh, a week and a half. And um, I'm like, why are we going to Vegas? She's like, oh, we have this this event for the company. He's like, you'll learn everything you need. You'll learn there. OK, I guess. Um, how much is it? And gives gives me a number. And then I look up how much the flights are. And then I look up how much the hotels are. And I'm like, oh, this is not cool. I'm going backwards. Yeah, this is like, I, I will go really deep in, in into, and I, I don't really have savings because I spent everything, you know, bringing them to Canada. And uh, I called my younger sister and I said, uh, my bank is not working. Can you send me $500? Because I already have 500. This is another 500. And maybe this is a story that I've never shared before. The thousand dollars was enough for the flight and the convention ticket. It was never enough for the actual hotel. And, um, you know, after a week and a half, it's my first time ever, first of all, in the States. Like, I've never been to, 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 to the States. So my first city that I come to was Las Vegas, which is insane. Um, and, you know, I, I land a little bit at night. I don't know nobody. Nobody knows me. I just that upline. And the I guess the grand upline, he kind of knows who I am, right? The kid from the club. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, I, I, that night we had a mastermind at night and it was just right beside the pool. And, you know, I was just talking to a guy till like three, four AM and I eventually end up sleeping at like right beside the pool. I don't know how security didn't kick me out or something. Um, I woke up, the, the convention was 9 AM. I woke up eight, got ready by eight twenty, I was just right at the door, ready to take some notes. So that was like, and I guess that event kind of opened my eyes to the network marketing. I've seen, I've seen all the success stories. And something in my head, Eric, said, I'm better than these people. Yeah, yeah. And isn't, isn't it interesting? Some, some are like inspirational. Some are like inspirational for different reasons. Yeah, like, I, I'm like, this like is. These people are not that sharp. Yeah, but. <laughs> I, I can do better than this. If, if they can make any money, I'm going to get rich. I was, I, was, um, I was a little shocked. Isn't it interesting when you get out of. I, I've said often that big events are where big decisions are made. I agree. It's hard to make a big decision in a small environment. Mm -hmm. So you need to, you need to be you, able to, you can, if picture. the desperation is strong enough or whatever, mm -hmm. but you just don't have enough examples of I greatness agree. and you're too familiar with, yeah, the people with the people and all that stuff. When you get into a bigger environment, like, Oh yeah, this is, these Bigger people are than playing at a different level and they're still not that amazing. And it wasn't even like that big of an event. Like yeah, I know I see matter. some people. Yeah, it, it, you know, one of my dreams was to host these big events or to be in big these big events. My company at that point was a small company. It wasn't mm. even like, you know, um, there was a couple hundred people at the event, it's, but it was just the examples that were set on stage. I'm like, well, I like this guy. I don't know why this guy's making this much money, but mm -hmm. if he is, I'm like. This right. should be a piece of cake. Right. Yeah. So you finish this event. You're kind of inspired. I'm charged up. You're charged up. Ready to go. But you're also a little in debt. I'm, I, it, uh, Did you that, come by that, yourself? I, I can I can perform myself. Yeah. Came, came by yourself. You know, you put all this stuff on credit cards, uh -huh. slept by the pool, uh -huh. all that uh -huh. stuff. You get home. Yeah. What happens? Um, 
so I, I messaged my upline right away, um, which is the guy. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, what do I need to do now? We finished the event. Just give me something to do. And he's like, you should host the home event. And I'm like, no. You want me to invite people to my house? And I, I you know, in an Arabic household, that's like a just big no-no. Like, is, you is, don't. Is mom going to be yeah, making so appetizers? I'm like, my, <laughs> I'm like, so I, I you know, I, I, I found a way to break down the news to my mom. And like, mom, don't worry, just go upstairs. By the time you're done, I'll be done. And I had a week. Right, so we we come we come back. Why is it a big no no? Just an Arabic culture. Just I guess it's, it's just it's, family. Yeah, it's just this is the house for family. Yeah, or people that know family. Mm -hmm. These are mm -hmm. random strangers. Right, right. And uh, mind you, I haven't been in Canada for so long. I don't have a lot of contacts. I wasn't like a social media kid, or mm -hmm. I didn't have a big following or anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't even really post it on social media. A couple pictures here and there, and um, I started inviting. And it took me a week. I invited. I I I believe. It was anywhere from 700 to 900 messages that got sent out to people. Okay. And it wasn't no copy paste. Yeah. I'm talking privately, their name, sometimes a voice note. Like I'm trying to make it as close as possible. And I'll send you another picture you can put up after okay. of my first home event. There was, there was eight people in the room. Four of them were on the team already, <laughs> including my upline and four were guests. So and and if you're listening on podcasts, you can go find the visuals of the video yeah, version yeah, yeah, of this yeah. on YouTube. On YouTube for sure. Um, but so you see this picture: eight people. Yeah, eight people. Four were already on your team. Yeah, four yeah. were guests. So that, in a sense, crushes my soul. I'm like, I've been invited for this. Seven hundred, seven hundred uh, messages, right. and eight, and you know, four people. And I took a week up. off work, right? Because I really just wanted to just focus on 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 this event this is when most people quit and and i don't think i've had thoughts to quit i it, maybe it just took me a little bit back but you know after that event um nobody signed up but i've had so many people like oh man i, I wish i'd have come but i just had this thing so i've done uh one after a week and a half or two weeks and the house was full like i've, I've had over 50 people do you have a picture house. of that too i had to have a picture all of right good well. So, and, and how many people were there? Almost 40, 50 people. 40, 50 people. Yeah. What happened in the second one? And this is the second one when people signed up. And I saw, and, and that month I made a thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. So, so you sign up some people finally, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. get things moving yeah. a little bit. Most people get so discouraged mm -hmm. their first one out there. How yeah. was your presentation? Uh, well, you know, I, I was very smart with it. Yeah. I just said, hello, everybody. Welcome to my house. My name is Rakan. Listen. I, I have this great opportunity for you guys. <laughs> I will let my upline speak. So you just introduced. <laughs> I just introduced. Yeah. So second, I know one, if I second one, same thing? A second one, same thing. Right. I just shared a little bit of my story. That's all. And 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 I, I love the way you formulate stories as that, you know, you just have a three step right. system, pretty much what you do, what you hear about it, and what the solution is. So I shared that, introduced my upline and kinda he he spoke, he did the presentation and the sec that that was when you know, I've had. You probably got your the attention of your upline for the first time. This is when my upline event. was like, I "Watch out somebody. for this kid." Yeah, yeah watch yeah, out yeah. for this kid. And that had to feel good. Yeah, absolutely. You got recognized absolutely. finally. Um, so I made a thousand dollars. I got promoted to this rank. whatever rank. Yeah. Right, and uh, I was excited, man. I started slowly, slowly, started seeing myself as doing this. Mind you, I still had, I still had a job. Yeah. Like I'm still doing this on a part time basis. But now part times. What what is paying, part, what is part time? Nice, I understand. But what does yeah. part time look like now? It was like one hour a day before. Yeah, now it's to probably make that three hundred bucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. In six months, definitely, definitely a more. What, hours what do you right think now. it was? Maybe real like life. four hours, five hours a day now. Four or five hours yeah. a day on top so before of your work, work, after work. Yeah, before work, thing. after work. Yeah. So now you've you know ramped up. Yeah, the yeah intensity yeah. absolutely. And that that first month that so, where you really ramped it up is thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. 90 days from that, or I would say four or five months after that, was I started making five thousand dollars a month. Um, what that feel like? Oh, my God! How, how long? How long did it take you before your but, mom wasn't working, or did you just say, "Mom, don't do at, it"? At five thousand a month. At five thousand. Yeah. At 5, so she was holding the sign out in the yeah, street for four, four or five months in cold Canada. For four or five months in and cold that was, Canada. And every time I saw her leave the house, it was just like a kick, mm. like just like a get to work. Yeah. Yeah. So you did. Yeah, yeah. So once you got to 5,000, that's enough to kind of, yeah. You know. I quit my job 
though I was making a thousand dollars a month. As soon as I ranked up, like maybe as soon a as month you after, saw that you could yeah, do this, I'm like, I, I don't, I, I think I need to like, go. I, I just, I felt like my job was holding me back at this point. Yeah, because it was long hours, and I'm like, I, 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 I don't know if I can live off a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, but I had some money saved up in the bank from my job, and some money I'm like talking maybe seven thousand dollars or something. Like barely, mm -hmm. I just, I did the calculations that if I don't make any money from network marketing for the next three months, it, would I just be able to pay the house, pay the food? Just, just keep. So you had a little runway. Keep, yeah. Just, just, just write the basics. You know, there's, and I'm going to say this and it's going to probably be controversial, but I think it's a bit of a myth that a person can be very part-time mm. and build a big income. Mm -hmm. I think you can have a hobby mm -hmm. like level and make a few bucks and meet some interesting people and see some cool things and, mm -hmm. and have value from the products. But if you want to have something real full time, you kind of have to go all in yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in order to be able to build something I big. Agree. I mean, so those that say, Oh, I'm just going to be part-time for the next five years. Well, I can predict what your income is going to be for the next five years. Yeah. At it's some not, point, something's got to give, for sure. you know, where this becomes a priority. Yeah. Now I do know some people, a few that are like doctors and they also have a network marketing business, yeah, but I mean, stuff like that, doctors. you know, they have a practice <laughs> yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they all, or a chiropractor also has a network marketing business, but even some of the most successful network marketers that were chiropractors at some point, yeah. they Just, sold their practice or they had somebody they, else step in, cover it. And then they went after it. I agree. And, that's just, that. that's what happened to me. Yeah. I, I had one month where I had good success, yeah. no skill, be in the right place at the right time. And I just walked away from every like normal <laughs> income producing thing. Yeah. And 60 days after that, my, my business fell apart because I didn't have any skill at all. Yeah. And then now it's like, well, what am I going to do? There was yeah. no place to go. So I had to like you know, bear down and yeah. Well, and, I, I and have a story for I, yeah. We'll I, get to that. I lost it all. That, yeah, we'll get that, to that. We'll, we'll get story. to that. Yeah. So, so um, this starts to take off for you. Mm -hmm. You start to build a team. You're still mostly uh, Canada, just, Toronto, just Toronto, Toronto market. Yeah. Just Toronto. Um, was it a bunch of young kids because yeah. you were young? Yeah. Was it like this young a culture? Of, uh, Everybody it, was doing a, the, <laughs> the Wolf of Wall <laughs> Street. Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Were they doing yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, It was like <laughs> all the, the hyper Just aggro stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I figured what my good, uh, my, what my way of recruiting is. I found my happy place. What was that? Uh, the gym. Really? I knew how to connect with people at the gym at an at a interesting way. Well, what was it? Like, I'll give you an example. Um, and this is one of... The one time I was at the gym and, um, you know, at this point, you know, working at a gym, you're competing with everybody. You want to have the best body you want to have the best shape. Just, I just always have, I just want to compete with everybody. And I'm competing with guys that are 10 times my size, but in my head, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm going to, you know, figure yeah. this out. So I'm lifting this weight and I'm, and I'm giving the guy, the uh, like a, you know, a guy that's working, just random guy. I'm like, Hey brother, just, do you mind just taking a small video for me? Like, yeah, of course, man. He takes this video. And I'm just pushing weights. And the guy's like, wow, man, good job. Man. Thank you, thank you. And I strike the convo saying, I'm new in the area, are you? And um, I talked to him for a couple of minutes, took his name, took his Instagram, and I walked away. And then eventually by promoting on social media, the guy was like, well, this, this kid looks like he's doing something for him. I would like to be with him. And I've done this so many times. One of these people that I've done this same way with was pretty much the reason why I went six figures. Hmm. Yeah. So I found like a very easy rhythm to sign up people at the gym because I felt like I was home. You know, I was right. like, you had your natural environment yeah, and yeah. you came up with a way to be able to prospect. Yeah. Some like easy prospecting. Really? And I wasn't pitching. I wasn't like being too pishy. I took their Instagrams, walked away, took the Instagrams, walked away. I didn't even take phone numbers because I felt like that was a little bit too personal. Let me take the Instagram, walk away, met some, Hey, after the, after the, you know, my session, nice to meet you. Let's stay in contact. Let's hit a gym workout together. I don't know. I was never going to work out with them, but right. you know, let, just let me be friendly and message them. So the algorithm shows my stories first. Cause I've, they've created a new friend and a lot of, a lot of signups at that point were through that way. Make contact, yeah. get their Insta. Walk friend them up, friend them up, walk and away. then they just start seeing your posts, yep. seeing my posts, seeing my social media. Um, another happy place for me was soccer. You know, mm. I grew up loving soccer. I grew, I played 
you know, uh, I played semi-pro in Canada my first year. And then I, anyway, I tore my ACL meniscus and that was the end of it. Who, who's your hero in soccer? Ah, that's a hard question, Eric. Any, uh, I mean, there's so five. many. Uh, um, of course, Ronaldo Messi. Um, there's a lot of big Saudi, uh, I guess, air players that that I like. Uh, um, like Hakimi is like this I young met, guy. I met the goalkeeper um, for Egypt. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, what did they call him? The, oh the, my the, God, the Great man. Dam or whatever Has, it was. Something uh, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hassad was his name, I think. No, nah, I don't know. My, my memory is, is, is... But the World Cup guy. I know I know exactly what you're talking about. He yeah. was like the oldest guy to play, to yeah. be a, a, a keeper in the world, something like that. Yeah, yeah. He was a crazy guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and Ronaldinho, met him. Here. No, in, in uh, Dubai. Oh, Dubai, yeah. Yeah, Neymar I met uh, uh, last summer. That's a, here. That's an interesting character. An interesting character. Yeah, crazy. yeah. These guys are different levels there. They play for sure. Yeah. Different levels. So, so did, you, did you watch Ted Lasso? uh the, the, the tv series no you have to watch it really yeah it was on apple tv it's 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 loosely about soccer oh, but, but it's a it's a very interesting network marketing type series oh okay. yeah for real, interesting. for real it's good it's good um all right so you found you found recruiting through the gym you found recruiting yeah. through soccer which and the lesson there is find you, your place find your place yeah. and then find a way to connect to connect and Connect, walk away, connect, walk away, connect, walk away. Connect, walk away. Yeah. You, but the connection itself, you're kind of not walking away because now you're kind of tethered yeah. to that person. They're going to keep, keep seeing keep, your stuff. Keep, yeah. Um, keep talking to them. Like I. Yeah. So it was kind of a, a hybrid form of attraction marketing. Pretty much. Pretty okay. much. Anything that they post. Like I've always had a way where like, let's just say they're posting something that's funny. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people just skip it. Mm -hmm. I would laugh. Mm hmm. And it just created a, a friendship. And, yeah. And I believe through these friendships, people just got started with me. You know, it's funny. You're right. Because even with my social media following, yeah. I see, you know, who who liked, who followed, yeah, yeah, who, yeah. Who's, yeah. who's consistently yeah. at the top. Doing, doing, yeah. Who's consistently you interacting. Them, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You notice the names. Yeah. I, saw, I, saw, I see you. <laughs> I see you. I, I see you. You know, yeah, out yeah. there. It's kind of interesting how that happens. All right. So. You do this, that's kind of your secret superpower. Did you mm. teach your te people to do the same thing? Yeah, but my or, team or you just kind of did it. Yeah, I kind of did it. Um, I, See, the, the, the good news of building a young team. Yeah. They have a lot of energy. Yeah. But, but they're also but very easily distracted. So easily distracted. It's like, my look, a butterfly. <laughs> Boom, they're gone for a week. <laughs> Pretty right? much. So you've got this young team that yeah. you're trying to get them to focus. Yeah. but it was How, so how was that? It, it was definitely tough but i mean like it was all university students hmm. so we like exam seasons we had <laughs> zero volume and then you know summertime we go back and then it, it it was interesting to to be able to lead and it was my first time really leading anything i've never really led a team or somebody calling me a leader or their leader yeah how did that like, feel it was interesting feeling good feeling I, bad I, feeling, I, mean, I, was, feeling? I, I felt like i was responsible for people yeah and it made me work harder how many by, by this time how many more of your family members are in in nobody canada oh in canada it's still still same same it's like my my, my dad hasn't come my dad just stayed back home and still there yeah my siblings just 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 they're around we're getting their are, are they there. still together or no, no yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. they're still together, he was just closing they, everything out there i mean is he still there now no no no. where is he now canada okay yeah, got it got it got it yeah. um so did you, you're building in, in Toronto. Did, yeah. Did you, and was, was your company operating in more than Canada? Mm -hmm. Where? All Where over the world. They, all over the world. Yeah. Um, so was this service company or product company? Service. Service company. So, and, and the reason why I asked that question is there is a trend yeah. currently of technology-based companies, education-based companies, People are innovating yeah, and they're yeah, trying different yeah, things. Yeah. And there's winners and losers. There's yeah. there's companies that are trying some things and they're not working. And there's yeah. companies trying things that are working. Uh, working for sure. um, you know, the the not having to ship product and being able mm. to have, uh, being able to operate more virtually around lower, the world. Lower cost, yeah. Yeah, it has some advantages. Physical mm. products also have some advantages. So I think the future is going to be a blend. Of, uh, uh, both, I agree. Yeah, of, of physical and digital mm -hmm. products mm -hmm. uh, is where I think things are going to go long term. Yeah. But when did your business step outside 
of Canada? Well, in, in, in the beginning, it never did. Uh, my upline was trained by old companies, right? He was in a previous company. He was in two previous companies. One of them is a very old school company. What is it? What is it? So it was ACN, ACN his first okay. company. Second company was Vima. Vima so right. it was like, boom, 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 well, boom, boom. ACN and then Vima, you yeah. know? Um, and I, he kind of took the best of both worlds. And I com combined them in the system that I was used to. Mm. So he was doing these home events and he was like, well, the only way you can make money here is home events. We've never believed in online calls. We've never believed in closing online. I have to meet somebody for me to sign them up. So hence why my team never grew outside. Mm. It was just, it I guess it was because- Big face-to-face -face culture. Yeah, like huge. We met up with the team every day. Face-to-face -face culture, but yet you were still prospecting using social. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. where yeah of course we bring was. people from social and then but uh, for me to like pitch them or talk to them we've never had like jump on a zoom or jump on this and yeah that was, it was just before that isn't that funny that, that it's, it's crazy that, it wasn't that long ago I, I, and, and, and that's my point it wasn't that long ago and i've had this big disbelief that i could never sign up somebody on zoom hmm. like what do you mean sign up people on zoom like i because I, I got started with somebody so they have to get started with me and it has yeah, to be how, physical how you get enrolled does a lot to ingrain in you <laughs> it does. what you're going to do yeah. with the next person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, all yeah. right, so this is happening. It stays, stays local. Yeah. When does it finally break out of local? Well, uh, uh, four or five months, I told you I hit uh, $5,000 a month. Three months after that, I hit six figures. Uh, so I'm making like $10, $12,000 a month. Uh, yeah, 10 to 12. And I'm like right now on top of the world. Like, Ten to twelve thousand a month. Yeah, you're, you're balling. I have never seen this much money in my entire life. I'm rocking and rolling. The team is growing, and um, ten months after that, a lot of changes in the company happen. Major changes. Like so, it, what kind of change? Product changes, uh, comp plan changes, product, uh, comp plan name, uh, leadership systems, running the company. I'm talking like. So basically, a new owner came in. Uh, uh, in 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 a way, yeah. All right. So new a change in corporate leadership. Changed everything, and they changed everything yeah. overnight. We used to have one package that was such a small package, like a two fifty. Yeah. Uh, um, and then two fifty a month to just keep it on. Yep. And then they just like <laughs> they just like start being memberships at six hundred and fifteen hundred dollars. And I'm like, we were struggling selling to uh, two hundred fifty dollars. Do you think I can sell fifteen hundred dollars? That's outrageous. Mm. Um, so the company had a, like a big shake. Um, they were always late on payments and stuff. They just had just a bad, so, and, bad. And the, the lesson here, and again, I, I, I want the viewers and the listeners of this, the, that's the excellence project yeah. is to look for clues, yeah. look for themes, yeah. look for lessons. Yeah. And even if you're taking mental notes, yeah. how many lessons have, are, are there in the story that we, the conversation we've had so far and there's going to be many more yeah, yeah, yeah. collect these ideas, collect these, learn from somebody else's mm -hmm. experience. So you don't have to have as much pain in your own experience. Typically you still got to kind of go through it anyway, yeah. but at least you go, Oh, that's what happened. Yeah. So Rakan had this problem. I mean, that's how, everything, I, that's how I learned. Yeah. Everything kind of blew up yeah. um, and change happened inside the company. Mm -hmm. So I talked yesterday with a million dollar earner yeah, and she was like, there's so much change happening. And it's just, oh, everybody's just so frustrated. I said, well, you got to decide how you're going to approach this. Approach this, I agree. Because it's either, you're either a victim or this is an opportunity. Or opportunity. I, 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 I'm going to talk about the opportunity because it's, it, that had changed Please do. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so everything changes. So yeah, the that earth, changes. Er, the earth and gets unstable under your feet. Unstable. It was, I'm talking earthquakes, 10.0. I'm talking people falling. I'm, I'm talking yeah, yeah. like stuff is falling off. And I can tell you something the, the whole time, because I, I felt like I was stuck at $10,000. I was, I was at 10,000 for like straight nine months. It's the same income. It's not increasing, not, not, you know, not going up, not going down. And just so under, the people understand the whole period before, like the whole two years before, the only thing that kept me going through the hard times is the story I was uh, I was listening to on your podcast, mm. right? Where you were interviewing these big earners. And I remember like, I listened to a story, uh, you, you uh, to, to a podcast you did or a video, I guess, you did with Alex Morden. And I'm like, wow. Like at that point, he was like young as 20, 24, 25 years old. He had 15,000 people. I had like less than a hundred, like uh, six figures. I think I had like 300 plus people, but 
315,000. And then I was listening to Calvin Becerra and Danny and, and, and Stefani. And, and all these stories, they kept shaping my, my, uh, my decision making. So when that was happening, I've heard so many stories about all these leaders having shakes in their companies, what they have done. And um, everybody saw this as a, as a bad plan. Almost 80% of the company, actually 90% of the company left. Um, left. Left the company. The, the group chat with the company, well, all the six-figure earners, I think there was over 200 people in that chat. We ended up maybe with 25 people, 30 people, including Corp. So in, in those situations, and I'll just give you a lesson, there's, there's choices to be made mm -hmm. in these situations. Sometimes the changes are you know, a, a challenge of the company's integrity yeah. or honesty or character. And you, you've got to really make a decision mm -hmm. as, you know, is there a future? Yeah. Uh, would, are they being the honest? Yeah, Whatever, yeah. those types of things. But if they are, and you can be part of the solution, you know, and you could say, okay, I'm going to use this opportunity to, yeah. to plant my flag and decide what I'm going to do in this situation, yeah. there's that choice too. It's true. You know, so some people have a real scarcity thing and, and all they need to hear is my top leaders going to this other company and, and they haven't even looked at yeah. it. They haven't done their due diligence. Right They're like, I better go there first so I can be still in their upline. And that was, and, and I'll be able to capture yeah, yeah, the yeah. stuff that happens uh, within that organization. Uh, or I have a lot to or, say about this. Or I'll do that. both. Yeah. I'll do both for a while. I'll yeah. be quiet over here, but I'll still be public over here yeah. and I'll hedge my bets. Yeah. So, you know, what did you learn through this experience? You say you have a lot, a lot to say about what I you mean, have to say. Uh, um, I mean, I just, first of all, I had to see what was wrong. Like, why did this big check happen, right? Um, you know, the, 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 I guess the, 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 the new guy that took over, me and you know him. Um, and, and, you know, I jump on a call. Mind you, Eric, like I was making 10 grand a month. Now I'm making like... 200 a week. Like I'm talking almost 90% of my team left. So I'm in a- I'm So what a, is your mom doing now? Uh, dude, this is, uh, she's at home. Like, you got a little uh, savings? They don't, they don't know. I have some, uh, not, not crazy. Enough to Probably survive. Like, yeah, enough, enough to survive for 90 days. Mm -hmm. Enough so to survive for a very short days. period. Yeah, yeah. Here we are in the entrepreneurial back roller coaster. again. Okay. And um, I wouldn't tell her. She would freak out. So I'm like, you know what, let me, I have headache from, <laughs> I just have internal headache. So I'd rather not just get other headache from people outside. But I can tell you this, I own, I, I bought, as soon as I hit six figures, I bought a Maserati. It's my first car. I felt like I was like. It's never going to go down. The oh, income's never going to go my down. God, I'm this gonna, is the minimum. This is just on. for a couple of months. I'm going to buy a Ferrari after it. Like just wait for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Kind of Bugatti you know? soon. <laughs> like it was just. Top G. <laughs> 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 and. You know, after it was after nine months of making 10 grand a month. And the problem is because you think it will last forever, you spend every dollar of it. Mm -hmm. Like I had, I, I kid you not, Eric, maybe after nine months, I probably saved like a good five to $10,000 max. So in October, they start having these issues. By December, team gone. In the same time, in June, you came up with a video, and I will never forget this day. It was a video talking about <clears throat> you just finished the leadership summit or leadership something, and you were promoting GoPro. Mm -hmm. And you said if you buy ten tickets, it was somewhere in the round of it was five to ten thousand dollars. I don't exactly remember the numbers, so I'm like, so I bought it, and there was a big purchase. I've never really purchased something online for I don't know ten G's, but I'm like I'm a six figure earner. I'll make it next month, no problem. And what happens is I, to, I, I told my team, I'm like, whoever is going to be at this rank by December, I'm going to take them to GoPro because it's been my dream to go to GoPro, mm -hmm. right? The first year, um, I, well, I didn't know about GoPro. The second year, I don't really have the money. So I said like, I'm, so now it's, it's like my, it's like the third year I'm seeing GoPro and I'm seeing all the, and I've taken all the courses and I've, I've gone through your whole library. I, I need to go to this GoPro thing. Like this is, it, I want to, I want to go and I want to be, you know, involved. And... <laughs> Everybody that I told, if you hit this rank by this time, I'm gonna take it to GoPro. They all left. When was this? Uh, this was October twenty October twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. So yeah. four years ago. Yes, correct. Okay, so yeah, it just shows what yeah, can happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So four years ago, you you've kind of been full time for a year and a half. Uh, almost, yeah, correct. All right. Yeah. Um, and 
and you have this plan. I like so you, you buy a bunch of tickets. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this group. I'm gonna use this as a promotion. Oh, the they, promotion. They all, yeah, they all disappear. Yeah, and they all disappear. <laughs> I, I'll never forget. I think I called their off. I think you guys had a phone number or something at that point. And I called them. I can I get a refund? And the guy on the phone was like, "The best thing I can do is switch your ticket to a super VIP ticket." And mm. I'm like, "Super VIP it is." And this was. Um, I came to December. I, I came to GoPro 2019, uh, and this is when Grant Cardone was on MGM. This, uh, MGM, yeah. Mm-hmm. MGM Grant Cardone, Garden Arena here in Las Vegas, uh, and it was ET as well. Um, and this is my first time even seeing Magic Johnson, Ma- John Maxwell. I don't know about Les Brown. Magic. I think at the end too. 2019, maybe possibly. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, go ahead. And and I'm just now meeting all these leaders, these big people that I was listening to. Calvin was there, um, Jesse Lee. I'm like, ah, ah, I want to take pictures with these people. And you know, I'm sitting there. I'm telling my team here. I am a GoPro. I I, I I'm I'm selling them the dream, and I'm living a complete nightmare. Mm-hmm. Like I I I don't know. Because uh, I'm, I'm spending a lot of money just for being here in Vegas and, and coming here. But I'm so inspired and I'm messaging my, my leaders, my uplines. And I'm just going crazy in the chats. I'm like, we need to do this. And we need to do this. And we're doing this wrong. And we're doing this wrong. And why are we not doing this online thing? And and I'm just like, you know, every time somebody says something in, in uh, on stage, and I, I go on the chat and I, I keep editing them. And I left with a big, you know, n- so much knowledge mm. from, from that GoPro. Um, and then, and again, it's, 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 it's interesting how things kind of circle around at, at the beginning, you got around this big shot yeah. sponsor person and got to Vegas and got to, get to see a little, vision. little, little vision. And then you get to, again, get around Go this pro, group and I'm like, want to be known inside of this group. Now I want to, I need, I need seven figs now, six, figures. I can't even look at six figures no more. Right. Okay, so and so you you leave there, you leave leaving Las Vegas, you head back. I haven't left yet. Okay, so okay. I'm coming this because I got the super VIP ticket, mm-hmm. so it gets you to come to the Warrior House. I'm like, yeah. Ooh, let's do this. So I come to the Warrior House, and I'm pretty sure you don't remember this, but you know, I I so there was two Arab guys mm-hmm. that were here as well. Yeah, they, I, I remember. Yeah, and it was my first time seeing them, and you know, I'm saying hello, what's up. And there was no Arab guys. Egyptian guys, right? Yeah, Egyptian yeah, guys. Yeah, got it. So I was speaking Arabic. You know, I, I, they're introducing me to everybody. Like, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. And they're taking me as like a little brother. You mm-hmm. know, like this mm-hmm. kid is whatever. Now, I'm not telling nobody, of course, that I lost my team. Like, I'm like this tough guy. Like, Arr. And, um, you know, everybody's asking how much money you make. Oh, I'm making like 10, 15, 10, 15. Kept saying 10, 15. And I was making, yeah, 10 to 15 dollars, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not 10 to 15 thousand dollars. And, and, and I just want to like, I wanted to get into the group, so I kept going up to leaders and taking pictures of them, asking them questions. And um, I guess that's when I connected with with, with Jesse Lee. I connected with the, you know Danny and um, the, with the Islam brother. There's so many leaders that I connected with at that point. And one of the Arab guys, so he's like, "So you're you're Arab? You're building in the Arab world?" And I'm like, "The Arab world does network marketing. Like that's odd. All the Arabs in Canada, they don't even want to be associated with this." And he was like, if you think North America is good in network marketing, you're delusional. And he starts showing me events that was happening in the Middle East. And I saw my future. Hmm. I saw one video and I said, I will I will make sure I'm one of the top Arab network marketers in the world. And this is when I, you know, I go up to you and I'm like, you know, I want to do this. He's like, why don't you? And I, I kind of asked you, do you think I should do my own language? He's like, why not? And you said, why not? And that's when I took out a challenge. You know, and that was my first year uh, reaching out to the Middle East, starting content in Arabic, um, relearning how to do network marketing, no uplines in Arabic. So I had to like YouTube and there's like these old videos by this old guy that was <laughs> like he was trying to be Eric or I guess he, <laughs> something. And, you know, you know, when the audio is so far from the camera, it was just but I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to feel their language of, of how they say the word recruiting and how they say the word downline and upline and 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 enrolling and 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 i and and building the bit like i want to see the terminologies in arabic mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um so you know i watched enough videos to understand what's going on i had two middle easterners guy on my team there's a guy and a girl and i go up and i go back what to countries tra- well they were still in canada no right? i know but what countries were they from uh they were from palestine as well okay got it 
And one of them used to live in, in Saudi, one of the, my old friends, mm -hmm. uh, his name is Ahmed. And um, I go up to them and I'm like, listen, I have an idea. And they saw something in my eyes and I'm like, we're gonna do this and we're gonna talk to the Arabs and we're gonna be the first team and we're gonna be the biggest. I don't know what I'm doing. I am just saying stuff that I hope it happens. But you're excited, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited, right? Um, I go back to- I remember meeting you back, back then. Yeah, a um, little hyper. No, I mean, I, 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 I could tell that you had a spark yeah. for sure. I didn't know for real what you were going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I think it, maybe a year later you told me that at the time. You're, oh yeah, I told you. I, I, I confessed. You kind of <laughs> said, like you know, hey, I was confessing I, my everything sins. was falling apart. You know, <laughs> you didn't know, but I, I, I didn't have anything at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then and then you, you ended up joining the mastermind mm -hmm. and a year after and it and still, and it still took figures. me a while to learn how to that your, your name mm -hmm. and remember you and all that. i remember you you said one of my goals is you're going to remember my name at one of these times one, one of these times i'm yeah. like oh shit you know, <laughs> i probably should sorry bro um, so so anyway yeah. so so you get inspired you, i get and, inspired and again man. again you go to gopro you see one vision yeah. and then you see Kind of quote unquote your people yeah your people mm -hmm. and you look and you see an example of what's possible for your people yeah and but, some people but see i was that, a, but i was a younger version yeah better version I'm yeah like, like i'm gonna i'm gonna go i can I'm gonna go i can crush this. i can i can i can do this at a very high level yeah so um so tell me what happened how, how, so how does that all we, work out we you know a couple it took a couple months to get some people get the system because because you're at rock bottom at this yeah point. rock bottom Rock bottom. Okay, you go took, home, it, you're rock bottom. You're it like, took 90 days. But how how much did the vision help you go from rock bottom to growth again? It was everything. Hmm. It was it, you had nothing to hang on, but the vision. You can't hang on in your checks. You can't look. I didn't even open my back office. I can't open my back office. I I I'm depressed every time I see my check. Yeah. So I I wanted you know I I have 90 days and I, I can't look left. I can't look right. I'm I'm, I'm just not doing. I, I need to build this team. So I gather my North American leaders. And I'm like, listen, we have 90 days. We're gonna rebuild this. We're gonna do this at a high level. Here and you know, fun. I was maybe a little bit too extreme at that point in my life, but is that possible? Well, I, I I put everybody in the house, and I said nobody's leaving until we get back the team. Is that back. possible? I mean, to be too extreme. I, I don't. Know. I don't I think mean, that was. It. You think about it, all these origin stories, and it's you look at when they when they did the movie, uh, the Social Network, or oh, whatever it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, they're all in a house. Yeah, I agree. They're all programming. Yeah. They're all doing the stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's extreme. Yeah. So uh, I, I, first ninety like days. If you're gonna do it again, if you're gonna do it again, and you didn't want to do that, yeah. I think you get a lower result. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. If you're like too I cool agree. for yeah, it. I agree. Yeah, too cool for it. So I gather my my, my the the five six people that were everybody left. gets in, moves into a house. Basically. Yeah, everybody moves into this house. Are they living there? Living there. Okay. And some of them had to go home and come back the next morning. It, yeah. We had like a shift. Like they they had a job. In ninety days, we paper got, up on the walls. Yeah, and I'm talking like goals. We have seven twenty to seven thirty. Do this. Seven this. Eight p.m. We're doing this. And it was just all day, every day. I even felt at one point like the leaders were just exhausted. But sure. you know, I I I am not taking off an answer. I'm excited. You guys should be excited. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and slowly the team, the new energy of the team. I'm talking the new people, um, that I start getting in. Replace and, that old and, energy. And and it actually didn't replace it. It moved the leaders to do more because uh. they were seeing a new volume come in. And like my sister came in, and my sister signed up after that whole thing happened. Right uh. after I came back from GoPro, I'm like. Just, <laughs> just sign up. Let's go. Just sign up. Let's go. And she's just an excited. You know, she's a hyper person. She's just excited. So she didn't understand anything. But with her excitement, she could brought up people. I was sitting down with them. I explained, and they signed up. So she started having success stories. My sister, there was we had a bonus in the company, right? If you sell X amount, you get an X amount bonus, and that bonus is ten thousand dollars. And I could not believe it. Like I, I helped her sign up these people. She, I think she signed up like six, seven people on the biggest package that we have. She made ten grand, and my whole team was like, "No way, ten thousand dollars!" And mind you, I, I was even like still at like a thousand, two thousand dollar range. I can't tell a my week or a month. Uh, that that was ten thousand. At, at this point, it was still like didn't get the team back. Yeah. Like, was, as soon as they came back from Gold Pro, it was January, February ish. Yeah, um, yeah. My income is back to two thousand to, to three thousand dollars a month. And she, she makes gets a 10. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. And little sister. And yeah, little sister. 
I can't tell her she's making more money than me, but <laughs> but she takes it and she shows it to all these old leaders that I have, and they all get like activated, like activated. One new blood activates my whole team, and this new blood is my sister. Hmm. And um, and and I just want to pause that yeah. because the lesson here that's a good lesson is. All you need is one, one story. One person, one story. And it starts with you. Yeah. You make the decision, mm -hmm. you attract somebody, yeah. and that person shows what's possible to mm -hmm. everybody with all of their different limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. It just destroys their limiting beliefs. They don't have any excuses anymore. And they yep. go, oh, I guess it's possible. Time to go. Yeah. You know? So they, they re-engage. This whole group re-engages because of your sister. Everybody just is on fire now. We start you know, reaching out to the Middle East, Mind you, the company at that point was very small. A lot of people left. I got a call from one of the, well, I guess the, the owner. And um, he was like, listen, I know you're struggling. Um, I know you're not making what you used to make, but you got to trust me. You stick around with me. I will make you a millionaire. And I don't know what's in my heart. You know, I, I feel like, Eric, in life, you have these couple moments that you truly believe somebody. That's one of these moments that I just fully with my heart believed him. And, you know, we went to work, we went to work six months in, we started building a small Middle Eastern team. And um, six months after that, um, I I, we almost signed up 10,000 people. 10,000 people 10, over the course of the next 12 months. Of the, Yeah, total 12 months. Yeah, and and before we gloss over this, yeah, yeah, again, yeah. collecting lessons, you know, what does it take for excellence? Um, but we were crazy. He, I understand. Yeah. But in addition, the leader yeah. of the company yeah. shared his belief in you. Exactly. Yeah. And that matters. Yeah. Mm. And we, anytime you have the ability to give another person the gift of your belief in them. Do it. Anytime you can just share that. You don't know what they're going through. They might be acting confident. I got this. Whatever. It's crazy. I don't need recognition. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. All of this that stuff. That was me. <laughs> right? And I'm good. But, I'm good. But you're struggling. But, but, but yeah. then still, mm -hmm. you, you say those words. And when you say that stuff, even if a person just acts cool, yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Thumbs up. Yeah. You know, whatever. But they go, they leave that conversation at different. Yeah, I agree. And they're like, hmm. And I know? feel like that's how a lot of my international teams came in from Latin America to any, I'm not so, talking only the Arab world. So anyway, things explode. Expl I, some, like in a way I've never seen before. What countries? All over the Middle East. I'm talking Name Egypt. Them. I'm talking Egypt, Jordan, Jordan, Palestine, Saudi, Qatar, Kuwait, Dubai, uh, UAE. I'm talking majority Egypt of the Arab also, Egypt is when we like, we had a, like a big team join us at that point. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was so the, I was the hot shot in the middle. You're the hot shot. I, was, <laughs> I felt like I was, you know, <laughs> going back home from, you know, the, this, this, from, this, this westernized yeah, yeah. Uh, and, guy, you know, look at this, look at this, <laughs> um, you know, quasi American it's true. Uh, coming back into the middle East with yeah. these capitalist ideas. Where did you get resistance? Oh my I mean, god! You, you, you got a lot of acceptance. Network marketing is so different there. Hmm. The way I guess the, the old network marketing, the new version of network marketing is fine because it's a lot of social media stuff. But the old version, they, these guys were trained under like QNet. Hmm. They were trained under like uh, you gotta go sign up all your family type of thing. Like yeah. that's how they're trained. Aggressive. A very aggressive. But. I've always been curious about this and I've never really asked, is there a cultural thing around the capitalist Western idea, network marketing versus Middle Eastern yeah. uh, core values? And was there a difficulty in finding that blend that was going to be acceptable that, that they could own for themselves versus feeling like they're selling out to some yeah. Western philosophy. It took me it took me some time for sure to get the philosophy like stamped. Uh, now I don't think they they had this this negative ideas because all majority of the time it was uh, like yeah. uh, network marketing was American companies going to the Middle East. Yeah, it's really rarely like Middle Eastern companies, right? right? Uh, this is before the Dubai hype, and um, it, it you know I, I people liked who I am. Right. Mm. It was a guy that, you know, my Arabic was good, but not that good. Like mm. you can tell I, I haven't been in that country for some time. Um, but you're still kind of 
one of them. It's still part of I'm your, still, yeah. It's still I'm the still tribe. like, yeah, I'm still in the tribe. I'm you're, still you're in like the tribe. The, you're like the, 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 the tribal member who had gone yeah, like, yeah, yeah. over the Learned ocean everything came and, back. and somehow <laughs> sailed back on a boat and said, look, I have treats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, uh, I, I have, have gifts. Yeah, I have scrolls. <laughs> I have stuff. Lessons. Yeah. And, and this is when, you know, I, I and because I, I guess in the Middle Eastern culture of network marketing, they don't really promote anybody outside of their company, yeah, which is weird to me. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I was like the guy like, Oh no, y'all y'all should listen to these guys. Y'all should listen to Eric. And you know, I've 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 um I used to take your videos, translate it, and give it to the team, uh, like in Arabic subtitles, and it, they 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 used to love it. Mm. So I guess uh, we've had acceptance. Now for that ten thousand uh, people to happen, I had to fly out there. Mm -hmm. It was my first time ever having like an international team. This is before the ten thousand. We maybe have like because the ten thousand were very like in each country. Sure. Right. Um, so I guess I started going to all the countries back to back. I stayed in the Middle East for almost four months. For I remember that, that. For that. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I went for a time. Yeah. But for that 10,000 to to get intact, I had to go there and I had to kind of show them the ropes and show yeah. them kind of how to work. And a lot of them were like early stages in, in their careers. And well, first of all, I loved it. Yeah. Um, I felt liberated a little bit. And this was COVID days. Sure. In the middle uh, of COVID. It, it, early COVID. Cause Canada was shutting down bad. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not playing this game. So you got there before, Look, before I just, everything before I, the borders I, got shut down. I, before, right before the borders got shut down, yeah. Uh, um, and I stayed there. And and was it what, what was happening in in COVID? Yeah, Middle stuff East, they don't really didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> was it like Dubai? They didn't. No, everybody not even to, close. No, everybody went to Dubai because you know Dubai didn't care. Dubai was a little bit more, a little bit open, but I'm talking, I'm talking Jordan and like all these countries were just open. No there. masks, like no some whatever. some masks, yeah. like, uh, but they weren't like serious. Like it wasn't like Canada. You get fined and like yeah, you get you like it was yeah, like they were running Lock after you in a hotel. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, the locking in the hotel was crazy. Yeah. But so, yeah, like, so you go there for four months. I as go there. Young man, you're yeah. what, 23 at the time or something? 24? Maybe at 24. Yeah. 24, 24 year old guy, you know, jet setting around, seeing yeah. all the Middle East. Country to country. Country to country, you know, kind of. Uh, First time training in Arabic. Yeah. What was that like? The website was not even translated yet. I had to pay my own guy to translate the website. Mm -hmm. And then I had to like fix word for word. It was. Um, and I had to practice so much. Training in Arabic is so much different than training in English. Really? And I, I, yeah, so much different. Yeah. And I, I'm, I speak as, I ask that as a lazy American who only speaks English. <laughs> I'm so grateful that the language, the business language of the world is English. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah, yeah. Um, but definitely training in Arabic is very different than the philosophies, how they speak. And then they, they, they bring a lot of religion into yeah, training. Sure. And I had to kind of, Learn that part, right? And, and 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 you don't want to misspeak that. And with them, I don't know if this is a bad thing or not, but let me—I'll I'll share it regardless. I felt like with these type of countries, I'm not talking only Middle East. I'm talking even I've noticed this in Europe. I've noticed this in Latin America. You'd have to have a meeting after the meeting. Like I, I, from what I've seen in North America, and I, I feel like it's changing. From what I've seen, though, like we'd have an event, we'd, tar, put, we'd put a target, and they'd go. Middle Eastern culture, Latin culture, I felt like after you set a target, you gotta sit down with them and set a target again. Mm -hmm. And and I remember that with that trip, every person that I met, I wrote, I, I took a white paper i wrote down what i need them to do nine days and i gave it back nine days gave it back and and i like i gave like maybe a hundred people papers hoping that at least maybe 10 of them can be like brand new six-figure earners and um yeah that was 20 we're, we're like 2021 now and it, we just blew up in 2021 we i guess the team started we started i think overall overall my organization we had eighty thousand people um join multiple like we've had you know I, I became a millionaire that year so you you, you got to a million dollars you know over 80 90 thousand a month what, what was your top month that year a hundred and ten and the I year before my top month of 2020 maybe like 50 was my top month 50 the year before 
Oh my God, like 5,000. 5,000. <laughs> this is 2019. So five, 50, 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 150. Yeah. 100, right? yeah. Oh, no, not 150, 100. 100, 100, 100, 100 something, yeah. 5, 50, 100. Yeah, crazy. You can't do that in a corporate job. Never. Right. So. Uh, but mind you, actually, can you imagine somebody that's never had money like this go to a millionaire status right away? Yeah. It was like, this is not real. Were you like, baller top g guy you know what, what did, did did you have did your ego get a little wild for a minute yeah oh my god yes but so i was like you're superman you know yeah, all that stuff. invincible but i was in the middle east i was building and that inspired a lot of my other teams uh, um non-arab to build in their countries sure and that's where we had a latin american team europe team today we're talking my two top teams would be europe and the middle east mm -hmm. and europe is like wow crazy yeah you become known all yeah. that stuff yeah and it can be a little bit seductive this whole you get you know, young good-looking guy you, you know yeah, yeah everybody's looking at you're you the tend, man you tend to make a lot of mistakes in that in that path yeah so talk to me about lessons learned uh during that season as honest as you can as honest as you're comfortable um i mean uh, well uh, one of the lessons is that you work a little bit less when you are a millionaire mm -hmm. um and and I, I don't know why i guess I, I i thought this would last forever like i'd mm -hmm. always have the same team always have the same income always have everything um and and i had to kind of wake up that reality um i i, I and and but the, the reality of having to rebuild uh, from time uh, uh, to time. yeah from time to time you got to rebuild and you have to do things and you have to and if you if you take a nap just look at your leaders. They are gonna start taking naps, and if they take naps now, the whole team's taking naps. And that, 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 these doesn't are naps you don't want. Yeah, it, it doesn't take time to, you, you know, switch it on back. Um, I learned to. Um, what about the ego side of things? It, well, that I was that was kind of my next point. Yeah, uh, I wanted to be in control of everything, mm. everything, and I didn't allow my leaders to grow at that point. I didn't allow my leaders to spread their wings, so and so called. And so some someone probably started resenting that. Yeah. 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 And I had to I had to learn the hard way for sure. Yeah. So uh, the hard way was the hard way is them people, a good person leaving your team. Either leaving or or throwing a tantrum or, or getting mad. Yeah. 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 Or putting you on blast. The whole thing. All, all, all of the finding above. your fault and <laughs> telling the world and it's and it's probably that was like my biggest thing is they found the fault that i have and they just like yeah they multiplied it by 10. make it a big and thing. yeah make make it a huge thing and and you know i i i feel like my biggest mistakes was i didn't allow people to to to, to just spread their wings i didn't allow people to fail hmm. that was a big thing for me yeah. I, I was too cautious and because I was too parents cautious, can learn lessons from this. When oh you have your God, kids, yes, you can learn yes, lessons yes. from this. My kid is gonna f up on his own for sure. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Enjoy kid. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can't, I can't talk. I can't talk smack right now. But, um, uh, women, women, big mistakes. Yeah. Um, you should get your ads. You're 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 a top guy. You 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 know, you just wanna. You're on you're, stage. You're on stage. You're edified. You're. Uh, um, people walking around and then Middle East you're like glorified like mm. it's 10 times what's happening here mm. like people walk beside you you have security guards like nobody can talk to you and I've never liked that culture but it's like the culture that I was like pushed in mm -hmm. um, I was always the guy that was stopped and talked to a nobody yeah because I was a nobody at one sure, point sure of course right um, I don't know how to say no to people when, when like taking pictures and stuff yeah because I remember my first event that I went to there's this guy that I really want to take a picture with. Really want to. Like, I'm talking this guy. I was watching on social media. Like, this is the guy. Oh, one guy I want to take a picture with. There's a whole lineup for people to. He's the top leader. So there's a whole lineup of people. <laughs> once once I got to the first of the line, like, I'm next. Like, he just left. And I, like, resented this guy. <laughs> I still resent this guy sometimes. <laughs> so to me. Sorry. Isn't it funny? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, uh, I have a story with that. I was, <laughs> I was uh, on stage giving out awards. This is a long time ago. Yeah. And when any, if you're ever in a situation where you're doing that, and there's a bunch of people coming across, getting their trophy, getting their award, you're shaking their hand, and you kind of, you know, yeah, end up saying kind of the yeah. same stuff. Yeah. Right. You know, hey, congratulations, congratulations well yeah. done, I'm proud of you, whatever. But just over, 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 over. So you know, stop, take a photo. You know, yeah. then they, then they, they move on. Yeah. Right. So there was this guy who came up to me and this was 
and he says, you probably, you know, and he acted like you're going to remember, you know, like, yeah. you know, do you remember I came across stage during the recognition three years ago and you told me this and this and this, and those words changed my life. Wow. And I took those, I took, now I was just saying the same stuff over and over and over. <laughs> it's true. And he took, he said, I took that photo and those words and both the words and the photo are up on my wall, in my office, in my house. Yeah. And I looked at it every day. Wow. And that, that was what got me through all these difficult times. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, I'm never going to, if somebody wants a photo. Don't, don't take it for granted. I'm never going to like look at that in a small way. Yeah. You know, if they want a photo, we get, yeah, let's do a photo. Let's do a photo. Yeah, let's do a photo. You know, so I've, I've sat in some lines, six, seven hours taking photos yeah. after events, whatever, because of each of those little stories. I, I, I thought like, you know, I've had a, like similar stories that happened, sure. like, you know, like, you know, being a top leader in the Middle East and being the face of the company in the Middle East. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's just, people would just want to take pictures with you. They want to, and then you tend to say some stuff. Uh, I learned not to say the similar stuff. I, I tried as much again to be unique to each person, but in a fast way, it's, I can't, because yeah, it's, it's, it's it's tough to- You still have you your have scripts. Like, uh, 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 yeah, exactly. You gotta have a script, but I, I wanted to, but then, uh, I, you know, I, I've my first, 2021, um, I've had 50 people uh, cross the $100,000 a year um, range, and I've had maybe um, two people yeah, two people crossed almost a million dollars. They hit the rank, but they have to kind of sustain it for twelve months to to make officially over a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just because some words I've said, yeah. a paper that I given them, a picture, a voice note, I a mean, call. Sometimes it's you know people come up and take the notes that you that I would draw out, and they'd frame them, put them in the in their <laughs> living room. I'm like, wow, I, I draw like stick figures, and yeah. like, no, 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 that's what you had me sign it afterwards, yeah. all that kind of stuff. The reason why I commend you for talking about uh, mistakes yeah. and, you know, young man, it's, it's, it's the same thing as like um, a, a 23 year old football athlete, mm -hmm. you know, you're playing premier cup soccer all of a sudden is being adored yeah, of by everyone. And it's difficult not to lose your head, mm. you know, or somebody becoming a young Hollywood uh, actor or a young entertainer With of some money sort. And, and, and yeah. So, you know, the, the fact that you kind of talk about the fact, you know, women were, were a challenge and it's not the women that were a challenge. No, it, it was, you know, you getting yeah. in your own way. What did you learn from that? Did, did you learn to like keep that separate from, yeah. from your business? Yeah, as a, uh, you know, as a top leader, no matter if you're a female or a male, right. As much as you can separate. Yeah. Um, it will come back to you at one point. Yeah. Unless you're going to marry them. Yeah. Be careful dating around inside your team. I, I agree. Um, man, there's so many mistakes that I've done. Um, you know, uh, getting out of line with um, giving feedback, like too extreme feedback sometimes. Uh, as I said, not allowing your leaders to grow, not allowing your leaders to make mistakes. Um, ha having to you know control everything, all that. Yeah, just not giving assignments to people. Mm -hmm. um, really like... Like I understand when some leaders kind of just take a step back, but some leaders just really take a step back. Yeah. I'm talking like, "Hey, sorry guys, I've been disappeared for a month." A month, right? right. Like imagine well, some people get, get they got that thermostat in their head when they hit a certain number. Yeah, they feel like they've arrived. It's over. Yeah, and and they don't even know why they they've stopped working. Yeah, but their programming from a childhood kicked in. Yeah, and it said. Now, anything more than this, and it's uh, kind of uh, disgusting. Mm -hmm. If you go beyond this number, yeah. now you're being an asshole. You're, 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 you're being greedy. Yeah. You're being a jerk. You're, you're being, you know, when is enough enough? Yeah. You can't appreciate anything. You know, so you're all this programming kicks yeah, in, right? For sure. Um, so going through all this process, the one, one thing, I, it, and we got to know each other through the mastermind that yeah. we're in. Um, I think that would, well, I don't think I know. That's what, that was the reason I went to seven figures. Yeah, there, there's there's this group called Next Level Mastermind. This is yeah. um, six figure earners and just above. for six figure earners and above, and it's probably average eight hundred or nine hundred thousand dollars a year in that group. And you know, we.
get together and talk via Zoom every other week, and we get together twice a year twice in person, year. and and just share ideas, uh, best practices of what's going on around the world. My team used to think I'm like the smartest guy on earth. Yeah, because you're, knowing you're, you're I'm collecting I'm, all the I'm good ideas from all everybody. Ideas. Yeah, it's like, wow, how did you come up with this? I'm a huge. You know what, guys? I just yeah. learned this. <laughs> I'm a huge believer in masterminds. Yeah, and and even if it's people from other organizations, there's think you've learned. You have to mostly what you can learn from your. Your from our people circle. outside of my company absolutely you yeah. wouldn't it, it, I, I wouldn't want to have a mastermind with people in my company because we're all doing the same thing right and and you know being at one of the um uh, um you know top two in my company yeah um what's up with that by the way uh, i know top two we're number two we're yeah, number yeah. two that's, it'll be fixed that's it'll screwed fixed. up bro. We'll, we'll talk to anthony all right, all right. Yeah, yeah catch him. <laughs> but um, we have to get Anthony on the pod. Back we back. should get Anthony on the pod. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, but you know, I, 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 well, you know what's cool, Eric? I think my biggest lesson, um, just being so long in network marketing, is is when you find who you are, you become unstoppable. Hmm. Like, and I'm not talking like spiritual. I'm talking about your, your personality in network marketing. Like, I have a personality in network marketing; it will never change. You know, I'm this guy. I'm, I'm this leader that just cracks jokes on stage. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm. It, that's my personality. I'm a guy. I would push things to the edge. Like, but, that's my personality. But, but you weren't doing it at the beginning. I wasn't. I wasn't being who I truly am. Yeah, you and, found you found your and you got permission and, to do and, that eventually. Exactly because Anthony, like, let's say he's a very like systematic guy. I'm talking like. Same call for the past 17 years he's been doing. Mm -hmm. And this guy's one year older than me, type of thing, mm -hmm. you know? He, like, he has like this 45-year-old soul, right? My upline has a, a, another way. So it's just, I, I took personality. I took the systems. I took, I just, from everybody I listened to, even people I've never and talked to. And some fashion, too. And, yeah, and, and some fashion. So so explain the shoes. It, uh, it's a brand at this point. Pull, it's pull, a, up, pull, it's up, a, pull up your shoes so people can, can see. Can they see. No, just, just take it off. <laughs> so... So he wears these these furry slippers, and and what's the brand of those? Gucci. 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 Gu Gucci furry slippers, and that became your thing somehow. I don't know how. I don't know why. I think I guess uh, I'm the first guy to to, to pull these off, yeah. but not really because I've seen other people with it before. Yeah. But I guess I just wore it. So, so you much. wear it all the time now, pretty much. Uh, uh, yeah, somewhat. I have like four or five of them. <laughs> Different colors. So some people collect, collect sneakers and, and uh, I sneaker collect heads, those. <laughs> and you collect furry slippers. I'm like the best guy for Gucci. They love me. <laughs> furry slippers. Uh, so a little bit about fashion. Yeah. Um, you know, you take care of yourself. Yeah. You know, you're kind of leading by example. I would also say the one the other thing that I noticed with you is by paying attention to what's going on inside of other organizations, being in the mastermind, and everything else, you decided to kind of up your game on social. Yeah. So hard. When was that decision? This is one. I feel like I truly found who I should be on social media a, a year and a half ago. Year and a half ago. Like imagine be, being in network marketing for so long. So long. What, what do you? Do? I mean, Three like and a half I, years. <laughs> but I, 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 I majority anybody of the that time, says something in their twenties, <laughs> you cannot talk about how long you've been involved with something. Oh my gosh, I'm such a veteran. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, but year, year I, and a half ago. You know what? Why I say that is because I, I guess I'm the oldest guy, but not the oldest guy in age, but the oldest guy standing long in my team. So I, I, I keep, I guess I'm programmed to think that I'm a veteran in the yeah, marketing. Yeah, but no, and, and in a sense, you are. You've gone through some wars. I've you've definitely gone through some wars. Yeah. You know, you rebuilt yeah. your team. You proved yourself. You know, you went through the initiation. Yeah. Welcome. But I Thank still you. say. Everything before you do before you're 30 years old is practice. Still practice. Everything. Well, I'm, I'm excited for 30, man. Everything. I'm really excited for 30. Yeah, so that's three years out. Yeah, three years out. That's ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. So anyway. But so anyway, I found media. myself. Yeah, I found myself on social media. 80% um, of my people that was following me, they all spoke Arabic. Hmm. I'm like, why am I still fighting with English? I did all English. And then I did this crazy Arabic transition where I stopped posting English at all. Like, completely just Arabic. I'm like, okay, well, let me just find the best of both worlds is that I'll post English content, translate in Arabic, and I'll post Arabic content and I'll mix and match. Um, a lot of, and, and because there's nobody in my uplines that had experience in build in speaking two languages, both my uplines spoke just English. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had to figure this out by myself. Um, just speaking this language, speaking this language, am I speaking both? Am I mixing and matching? So it, it became a mixing and matching uh, game where I'm speaking Arabic, I'm speaking, you know, English, 
uh, certain things here, certain things there. A lot of the con any content that I do in English will always be translated to Arabic. So, um, what, but what was the decision? I understand yeah. you decided to serve the Arabic market as well as English. Yeah. But the the decision as far as quantity and quality on social well, media. Eric, I haven't. I don't know any network marketer in the. Uh, you, you, ever, you ever read the book Blue Ocean? Blue mm -hmm. Ocean Strategy. Mm -hmm. When I was reading that, I just I, first of all, there's no Eric Warren in the Middle East. Hmm. Um, there's no. We've got a big following just, over there. I, we, it would be fun to do a tour sometime. I am. And we're, we're ready. Stop. Stop in and do. Each, ready. Yeah. Should we do it? <laughs> stop in, in every East major country. city throughout Ooh. the Middle East. Wouldn't that be? Fun? I'll have that ready. No problem. But all right. All right. Um, it, it, you know, there, there, there's. Network marketing is growing on such a rapid pace in that in, in the Middle East, and it's it's great. The real network marketing. I'm not talking about. No, unfortunately, you have the the bad companies and bad apples, and that's a yeah, part right. of it. But and, and it's it's the wild wild west a little bit. Yes. in the Middle East because but it's it's getting it's so new. Yeah, it's exactly. That there's you know people are going to come in and try and exploit. I agree, but they're going to get eliminated. But pretty it's quick. it's 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 getting to a point where it's somewhat stabilizing, mm. right? It it's becoming a a, a real you know profession there yeah, yeah. people take it as a real profession when i meet somebody i don't they look at it different now. a lot of the people that i've met in network marketing they don't associate themselves as a network marketer they associate themselves as something with a product uh. right like oh like let's just say they're selling health i'm a health expert uh. well not really you're a network marketer you're not yeah, a health yeah, yeah, expert yeah. i can't talk about somebody has a service i'm this guy with this service I am a network marketer. I introduce myself as that i'm always going to talk about that so that's when i identify and i'm like i have to up my game Right. I've never I've never posted stuff in Arabic. So I started, you know, I hired an Arabic assistant, an Arabic content creator. I was like, hey, how many contents can, can I can I put out? And it started as taking clips from my from my Zoom trainings and then posted that. Saw a little bit of traction. I'm like, let me up my game. Let me shoot content only strictly for socials. Um, I, I, and I, I don't I don't spend a lot of time on it. I, I shoot once a week and that's it. Mm -hmm. Right, I shoot enough enough content for a couple YouTubes, couple, and then from the YouTubes. Do you do a podcast also? I do have a podcast. I, I just started my Arabic podcast, but I have a podcast in English. Okay. Yeah. I just started my Arabic podcast. So you, are you going to take this podcast and, and translate it into, uh, Arabic? into Arabic? Correct. All right. When when you do, send it back to me and we'll, it. we'll post it no uh, up on YouTube yeah. and, and uh, for, for the Arabic audience yeah, that's yeah, out yeah. there. They'd love it. Um, that'd be sure. great. Yeah. So um, social media has been kind of a new boom. Absolutely. And if you've taught other leaders in your team to do the mm -hmm. same, I've been watching that. Yeah. Like your sister's like the social media queen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, doing all her stuff. Phenomenal. She's like uh, Beyonce <laughs> or something, you know, she's like the Arabic Beyonce. Oh, what did, what did she call Kim herself? K the Kardashian, <laughs> the Kardashian. Um, so the, uh, I, I saw, did, did I see that you did the whole um, Mecca thing? Yeah. Uh, last year. Yeah. What was that like? It was beautiful. It was like that. That's like the the big pilgrimage mm -hmm. in your faith. Yeah. Um, you know, what's cool about building Eric is that you know you don't only like what I love about network marketing is you don't. It's not that you just found find yourself. You found you find your spirituality. You 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 become closer to things. You be, you you what understand. Like I, I I've my, I've gone closer to, to to my faith through network marketing. Hmm. That makes sense. Um, I started belonging a little bit more through through network marketing to my faith. Hmm. And you know I was in Saudi and I'm like because I had a, I have a team there. I'm like I need to go. And not that I've been, I've been, you know, when I was there, I, I went when I was younger, but this is my first time as an adult, you know, someone, an adult that has money, mm -hmm. I guess. It, it, I, I'm going there and, and, and um, just, it, it, I felt like I restarted, hmm. you know, it's pretty cool, pretty cool uh, feeling. Yeah. I saw some of the pictures. Yeah. 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 Pretty cool. You, you could tell and look on your face. It was And like, everybody's, it, the cool thing is with that is everybody is equal. No matter how rich yeah. or poor you are, everybody wears the same thing. Yeah. Everybody says the same thing. Yeah. Um. So it just, it gives you like a humbling experience. Sure. Cause you're, you're, I'm as a top network marketer used to VIP seatings. Uh, nobody talked to him. Everybody, you know, the right, leader right, is here right. and you go there and nobody knows who you are. I'm yeah. like, uh, Okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of the things I like about network marketing is uh, it's it embraces lots of different cultures, so much, lots of different uh, so spiritual much. beliefs. My God, but it 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 not only 
I, I, I really hate the word tolerance. It doesn't, yeah. it's like, it's tolerant. Uh, it, it doesn't tolerate these other things. It embraces it accept, them. It accepts, yeah. It, it embraces, it embraces them, them. It encourages them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, you know, it's not judgy. Uh, it's not. Never, uh, never. It, it I have, uh, in my team, I have so many faiths in my team. From sure. uh, Christianity to, I have, uh, man, I'm Palestinian. I have yeah. Jewish people on my team. Yeah, people yeah. that live in Israel. Like, it, it's no longer uh, uh, um, like, oh, well, there's the there's big, you know, political conflict between Israel and Palestine. And, you know, I understand that, but we're people. Yeah. Like, these are these are governments fighting. Yeah. We're, 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 we're not fighting, right? And, and you know. That's uh, a pretty special thing. Just, and it's, just, it's, just the idea of uh having a positive environment to be able to understand each other yeah and communicate with each other yeah and, and people realize. will not like will, will not like me for saying this but uh, i i have um never seen um you know it, it doesn't matter what where you come from doesn't matter what your religion doesn't matter where what's your background i don't care if you're i don't care what your background is yeah if you're a person that you want to do business together let's do business together right, right? and this hopefully and and you know I'm never gonna hate on on what whatever their belief is. I'm, they they can't hate on my belief. I guess everybody everybody in in the Quran it says "Lakum dinakum You have your own religion. I have my own, hmm. right? And and we got all be accepted together. Hmm. And if you look at all the, I mean, I'm a political, I'm a very historical guy. If you look at all the three books, they all they all teach the same things. They all talk about the same things: Judaism, Christianity, Islam. Yeah. It's it's um, they all have the same core message. Yeah, it, it it never changes. Yeah, so I don't know why, and I've seen a lot of division when it comes to team building with this religion and that religion, sure. and, and and I guess it comes to a point where some teams take it a little bit too extreme. Um, but again, everybody's got their lessons to learn. And, yeah, and and some people, I agree, it, and it, I think it, it works it's, for some people. So it's part of their mission. It's part of their mission. Yeah, for me. I have all religions. I yeah. can't just jump on and read the Quran as soon as I start. Like sure. it just doesn't make sure, sense sure, for, sure. for for my team, right? Um, I can't piss off the 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 you know the Christians on my team, and not, I will not piss off. And I have, of course, other than Christianity and Judaism, yeah, I have yeah. other yeah, religions. But I, I I'm not I, I'm not that kind. It's cool that I'm able to learn about these religions and sometimes sometimes bring examples right. from these religions, right? right? Like sometimes when you know I have a call and I see a lot of Christian people and and I'm bringing an example of what Jesus did and here's an example and you guys run with that. Mm. You know I've done with with I love learning about cultures and languages and I just finished a, a European tour and it's my first time like having a big tour in Europe. Mm. It was beautiful. Really? My my God, it was beautiful. I went to Albania. That was my last stop, Albania. And I found out they're so similar to us, so similar to the Middle Eastern culture. Really? They were taken over by the Ottomans for 500 years. So they have a lot of the Turkish sure. systems going on, right? So it's like you go there, shawarmas everywhere, as people are dancing, similar music. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's, How many countries you've been to? I don't know. Too many, for sure. Um, over, 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 over 50. Over 40. At 27. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. A lot of 27 year olds don't have a stamp in their passport yet. I, yeah, I, this is my third passport. Yeah. <laughs> what, what does mom and dad think now? Mom and dad think now I'm a hero. It's mm -hmm. different. Uh, I've expanded, you know, what I love about network marketing is, is that it's a, it's a, it's a vehicle that you can embrace everything that you want. Um, I, I've opened so many other businesses outside of network marketing that allowed me to not even run them, allowed me to have other um business partners that are running the whole place i own one of the biggest arabic restaurants in toronto um like it's really to my vibes like i'm talking shisha i'm talking arabic food like it's just what i would want if i want to go to somewhere some, some place um you know i've opened up studios i've opened up banquet hall i recently i'm like what? you know <laughs> i'll tell you this i found the problem that i have in my team and i solve it right away i found out that we keep paying for these venues i'm like you know what i'm just gonna buy a venue and <laughs> i buy bought a venue so we're gonna start doing our events for free, team. Y'all enjoy it. But um, I, I bought so many things outside of network marketing that my parents are just looking at this like, when did this happen? Yeah. And um, you know, I, my my both mom and dad are they they I've retired them over time, but it is just it's cool to never have the money conversation again. Yeah. Um, and I'm not the kind to just give away money. Um, my dad was a wealthy man when I was in Saudi and he never just gave me money. Like here's an allowance of $10 or some, like, something I wouldn't survive on. And he allowed me to figure out my own way to, to grow. Um, so I'm doing the same thing with my siblings. 
is like, so my younger brother is, I remember when he got started, he didn't have money to come to the convention. I'm like, well, you got to figure this out. I don't know, do something for, for me. I'll pay you and then take the money and, and come to the convention. And it's just, I, I love the, the, the ability to teach certain things and, and it allows you to grow. I've grown as a person. I've grown as a human. I've gotten better. Um, I, 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 I've loved over my mistakes over, over and over again. I, I've loved developing people. I found what I really want to do for the next, for the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give you the last word in, in a moment. Um, as far as advice to anybody who wants to be successful in mm. entrepreneurship in network marketing, yeah. in side hustle in whatever they're doing. Um, but before that, I, I, I have you do that. Mm. I, I just want to encourage everybody who's watching to. Mm think about how many lessons were in this conversation how many things could you apply to your business yeah whatever business you're in to be able to do better yeah um what can you learn from his journey rakan's journey that maybe you can make your journey a little faster mm. um, think about that collect ideas yeah if you want to be excellent in anything collect ideas from people who are excellent at what they do. I agree. And if you do that, it's just, it's the biggest shortcut in the world. I just don't know of anything uh, that's faster in order to be able to go get around great people. Like how many times in this story did, did you get around Circles. the right group? And from that group, you became inspired to go do something. Mm -hmm. And also the gift of desperation. Uh, maybe it wasn't you. It was your mom. Yeah. You know, it was somewhere else outside of you that pushed you and said, okay, no more. Mm -hmm. um, you always had it in you, mm -hmm. but you needed a catalyst in order to be able to get there. So what advice do you have for people that are out there? You know, maybe they're in the struggle uh, or they're, they're languishing in their, in their early stage journey, or maybe they're starting over. Yeah. Uh, what advice do you have for them? Well, number one, it's never too late to start over. Um, I've had some of my leaders start over their third year and borderline make it seven figures. Um, so it's not, it's never too late to redo. It's never really too late to restart. Um, find your people. It is so much fulfilling when you find your own people, your own tribe to build network marketing rather than building network marketing as a just let me recruit him to make some money. It's like, let me recruit him and create a family and make some money. Um, the people that you start with typically are not the people that you end with. In anything. Yeah. Um, take as much risk as, as possible. <clears throat> take as much risk as possible. Like for me, paying for um, whether it's GoPro, whether it's the next level mastermind, they all came at a, at a cost of me being a little bit afraid to spend some money. And when I did spend the money, it's when money came um because I, I got so used to spending money on on me money just it eventually came never miss a convention my god never miss a convention no matter if even if it's the same people speaking even if it's the same people even if it's the same culture you don't know the compound effect of going to events you don't understand the compound effect of working um, and and look, I, I, we can talk about spirituality all we want and the God, the God in the universe, but man, the, the, you, you got to work hard. I I still work all day, every day. Um, I, 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 I still like isolate myself and just create ideas and I still message people. I still recruit people. Um, I'm still thinking of better ways to grow. I'm, I'm still creating new uh, trainings and, and. You know, I've made a couple million dollars from network marketing, and 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 my team is, th is thriving. It's 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 um. You you you'd have to have some hustle in you, especially in the beginning, just to kind of take things off the ground. If if your biggest goal in life is five thousand dollars a month, it's fine. But that, it, it, for you to get the five thousand, there's gonna be some struggles. There's gonna be some time. There's gonna be, and you just understand everything you learn in network marketing is not only only for network marketing. It's for everything in life. Like I figured life through network marketing and that's why I'm so loyal to the industry of network marketing. I love it. Um, there's always going to be shiny objects. I've been in the same company for almost six years. It's my first company, hopefully my last. I, I, don't, I don't care to jump around. 
uh, kind of focus on your mission. It doesn't matter if you're upline, downline, whoever leaves. If you have a mission and you understand that you're in the right place, you're, this is home for you, just run it. Run it. Longevity will always beat anything else. Well, Rakan, I, I would just tell you from that convention that you came to where you were broke with your VIP ticket <laughs> to today, back in my home, in our studio, having this conversation. I just tell you, I'm proud of you. Thank you, man. I'm proud of you for the it's effort. An honor. effort. I'm proud of you for what uh, the sacrifice. I'm proud of you for the resilience. Um, you're sharp as shit. Uh, you Thank know you, what bro. you're doing. Thank you. And you're just Appreciate warming that. up. I kept hearing, I'm still recruiting. I'm still doing this. I'm, I, I, I and I'm in, internally rolling my eyes saying still yeah. at 27. <laughs> he's working. I didn't mean it this way, still, but <laughs> still he's showing Eric, up. Man, I'll, still I'll, I'll, he's, he's paying the price <laughs> at 27. It's just an amazing thing. Um, I want to say still at 59. Yeah. Uh, you you've built a global empire, yeah, and empowered it will happen. And, and empowered millions and millions. It of will millions, happen, which will happen. So. The Eric War of the Middle East. Yeah, proud of you, bro. Thank you, man. Yeah. Um, one thing I tell you is, I I, I think it's a it, I I wrote it down. I could I try to find it, but I, I I couldn't. One of my books when I first got started, when I was listening to one of the podcasts, I said I want to be on Eric War podcast, and here we are. Here we are. Crazy. It's amazing what you can do yeah. when you set your mind to it. I, I agree. Right, I agree. appreciate you. Bro. Thank you, man. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Rakan Khalifa as much as I did. If so, please make sure that you subscribe wherever you're watching this and you pay it forward and share it with a friend. I know that they're going to thank you for it and help us spread the word about good ideas, good information. You heard us talk about Next Level Mastermind inside of this conversation if you'd like to learn more about that, if you're a six-figure earner and you qualify, we'll put the links into the description of the show. Until next time, go out there, make your life amazing. Make your life an example that other people want to strive to attain. We'll see you next time. Take care.